So we have formed a quorum and it's the scheduled time. So let's call the meeting to order. This is the panel meeting of the Information Technology and Broadcasting. As you see, I'm here as uh, the chair, Madam Elizabeth Squad, is not able to attend today's meeting. That's why, as deputy chairman, I'm standing in on her behalf. First item, confirmation of minutes of the last meeting. <coughs> minutes of the meeting held on the 9th of February 2015 have been circulated to members and the secretariat has not received any proposals or amendments. Do members agree that uh, I confirm the minutes here? All right, no objection. Thank you. Item two, information papers issued since the last meeting. The Secretariat has issued three uh, information papers since the last meeting and the details are set out in the uh, agenda. Item three, date of next meeting and items for discussion. For the May regular meeting, is going to be held on the 11th of May, Monday, 2.30, at room 3. And uh, the administration has proposed two items. One, a new report on Cyberport. That's item one on the list of outstanding items for discussion. Second, progress update on the introduction of customer complaint settlement scheme. Uh, item two on the list of outstanding items for discussion. Next, uh, item 4, progress report on digital inclusion. First of all, let's invite the administration team to join us. So uh, please uh, ask them to come in. With us today, uh, Ms. Susie Ho, Permanent Secretary for the Bureau, Mr. Victor Lam, Government Chief Information Officer, Deputy Government Chief Information Officer, Ms. Joey Lam, Mr. Kingsley Wong, Chief Systems Manager, welcome to you all. I'd like to invite the administration team to uh, walk us through the paper. We have, um, they have prepared a PowerPoint presentation and uh, please be as brief as possible because we'd like to give more time to our members uh, to ask questions. And we have another item today and I believe that our members would be um, attaching a lot of importance to that and that's relating to the non-renew of um, license for ATV. So I'd like the discussion on the um, on digital inclusion can uh, to wrap up um, on schedule that is up by 3.15, so please be as brief as possible in your presentation. Who is going to walk us through? Um, Mr. Kingsley Wong. Well, through digital inclusion, we would like um, all quarters of the community to benefit from um, the advancement in technology, but then as uh, there are some groups who are not able to catch up, that's why our policies are very uh, diversified in order to meet the different needs of different parts of the community. As the dis disadvantaged groups are they are not the mainstream clients, uh, therefore the market is very small and also because of the lack of understanding of their needs. That's why there are not uh, many apps uh, or uh, software that can meet their needs. That's why we have introduced a funding scheme to e encourage the sector to introduce uh, mobile apps uh, uh, catering for their needs and I will be making will be making use of the NGOs understanding and also their networking and also with appropriate uh, mobile apps and technology with government funding they'll be able to provide uh, use of useful information and also um, services that can cater for their needs and seven apps have been developed that can benefit different groups and uh, upon their introduction they've also been well received uh, by the uh, user groups and uh, last year we introduced the second batch of the scheme and five more mobile apps that were developed and three can help those with dyslexia and also hearing impairment and also for uh, students with learning difficulties to help them and also for people with uh, hearing impairment they can also make use of um, the aid to help them communicate with others and also for um, demented uh, persons uh, they can also be given training so these five uh, mobile apps are being rolled out and they can be downloaded uh, for use uh, by the users 
and also for the uh, for the three groups uh, that would have to, uh, to be given priority in uh, in services, uh, we will provide a multi pronged approach by providing um, accessible web pages so that they can also make use of uh, information on the online. And we will also be setting a good example so that uh, in public uh, domains we will um, provide such web pages, and we will also be introducing more such uh, um, accessible web pages so that uh, others can also. Um, copy our experience. And we've also uh, introduced a quiz online so as to increase the public's understanding of a uh, web accessibility campaign. And uh, in terms of our dedicated uh, web pages, if you look at uh, the uh, browse rate and also the download rate, it's been very high. And we've also been giving uh, uh, resources uh, to different organizations to meet their needs. And we've also got this uh, uh, recognition scheme. And uh, the uh, prize presentation scheme just uh, took place this morning. And uh, 100, uh, 100 plus uh, organizations were rewar rewarded. And also in terms of the mobile apps, uh, it increased uh, by almost 50%. Uh, and for the uh, dedicated uh, web pages, we would also uh, reach out to them so that they could also provide uh, more accessible web pages to those uh, with impairment. For elderly, uh, last year, uh, for the hidden elders and also for those uh, institutionalized uh, elders, we have introduced this ICT outreach pr program. This is uh, done on a one-on-one -on -one, one basis. We will teach them how they can uh, make use of those uh, services so as to enhance their interests uh, in IT. And uh, we have reached out to over 100, uh, 1,100 seniors, and they have been very excited about this. As the response has been very good this year, we are going to launch this program again. And the uh, Service uh, clients would also uh, be extended uh, to daycare center services users and also home care services users. And uh, for the um, for the needy uh, students, uh, we will uh, use we will provide more uh, internet learning support program. And uh, with the support of some uh, organizations, we have seen a significant increase last year. This year, during the first nine uh, months, uh, is already equivalent to the uh, uh, to the uh, usage volume of the of, of last year. And in terms of um, the I Learn at Home, that increased uh, from 4,000 to uh, 16,000 in 1314. And uh, during the first six months this year, uh, it's already uh, some 20,000. So it's one of the uh, highest uh, utili utilized uh, services. And in terms of the um, online um, learning support uh, for the low income families, uh, in terms of the uh, use of the internet at home, that increased uh, from um, 87% in 2010 to 96.4% uh, in 2014, so that's uh, comparable to the mainstream students. And last year, we also conducted a telephone survey for the uh, satisfaction rate. Uh, that also went up uh, during the last two years. And also in terms of the uh, in terms of the default rate uh, for the use of internet services for the two NGOs, uh, they've also come up with mechanisms uh, to go after those uh, who have defaulted their pay their payments. And uh, with their uh, efforts, uh, that already came down from uh, 4.3% in 2013 to just 3.5% uh, uh, last year. So um, uh, by the end of this year, it would be uh, the fifth year anniversary, and we will also conduct a review to see what arrangements should be put in place in the future. In the coming year, we will uh, be uh, adopting more targeted approach in terms of uh, digital inclusion. We will also encourage uh, more youngsters to get involved so that uh, we will be able to make use of their knowledge of, uh, the, of IT so that they can also uh, reach out to the disadvantaged groups. And on the 21st for this year, we are going to um, organize this uh, Let It Play uh, concert so that uh, 1,000 youngsters will be organized uh, to join, and uh, they would also uh, work together to publicize this. Thank you. We have uh, two members who have raised their hands so far. Who else would like to ask questions? Please raise your hands. I'd really like to wrap up our discussion on this item by 3.15 so that we can have more time for the next item. So um, to facilitate my um, uh, planning for your remarks or for your time to speak. On my all right, uh, Raymond Wong, Yu C Wing, and uh, Charles Peter Peter Charles Mock. Raymond Wong, thank you, Chairman. Well, the report covers uh, a number of areas, and there are things that we need to pay attention to. That's about uh, the mobile apps uh, for the disadvantaged groups, and also for the as accessible uh, web page. And uh, we've been we have been paying t attention to this, and also uh, we are also concerned about the elders' uh, use of the internet. So for the um, for the accessible web, I think um, it's been very scandalous, and still you are just uh, reporting the good news. I'm not saying that you are telling lies, but then you will have to be more honest. Uh, well, for the fifth, for the five-year program, how much have you spent on this? 
I don't understand how come the audit uh, still has not come up with a report. So I think uh, they will be coming to the PAC very shortly. This is a total disaster. This is a total failure. Everybody knows it. But then I'm not going to spend time on that with you because we all know what is happening. Well, for public money that has been used, uh, you have not been able to use it properly. All right, you've just uh, given us the figures and it looks like you've been uh, a huge success. But then when it comes to value for money and also for the um, Internet Learning Support Program, uh, it, has, uh, it was uh, uh, plagued by scandals. So you have not really done a proper uh, review. As for the other parts, uh, yes, there has been some progress in in particular for the uh, mobile apps uh, for the disadvantaged groups. Uh, we can see that uh, the members are come uh, the members are come from the relevant sectors. That's why we can accept the advice. Well, during the first round, all right, uh, you have um, uh, targeted uh, those uh, with uh, hearing, uh, sight impairment, and also uh, elders and so on. And uh, the advisory committee has also decided that uh, five uh, apps uh, would be supported uh, in order to serve those uh, with dyslexia and um, uh, with uh, dementia and so on. So what other groups have not been taken care of? So for the relevant apps, uh, I'm sure you, you must have taken that into account as well. So other than uh, enabling those uh, uh, disabled uh, to gain experience in the actual use, but then the report has been pretty silent on that. And also for NXB, if you look at uh, column 3, that is uh, for the population of relevant needy groups. So it should not just uh, be the members of the group or the NGO developing the app. I think these are very practical very practical things. And uh, for the relevant groups, uh, the coverage is very limited. That's why, in terms of the downloading figure, it's not very high. So very few of them have attracted uh, um, more than a thousand, more than 10,000 downloads. So if you just uh, rely on roving exhibitions and also NGO networks and so on, and para eight, you also talk about uh, uh, organizing carnivals. I don't think they are adequate at all. You have to make sure that your publicity program is effective, or else uh, However hard you try, it's not going to be very effective because the number of uh, people benefiting from that would also be limited. And also uh, on accessible uh, webs or websites, well, for the government uh, and also the uh, NGOs, uh, they have the duty to do it. But then the, administ the administration should also think about how you can extend it to the private sector because for the private sector, it does not have the responsibility to do it. And if you look at the targets and also uh, the figures and also on the downloading rate and also browse rate and, and hit rate and so on, many of them are... Uh, which uh, well, the administration has been taking a lot, a lot of initiative, but that does, that is not happening with the private sector. You will have to step up your efforts. And then for the um, remaining questions, I'll ask that uh, in the second round. So, can you ask the ad the administration to respond? Who would like to respond? Yes, uh, Miss Lam. Oh, Mr. Lam. Well, let me um, respond in several areas. Well, for the other groups uh, of the disadvantage, in fact, uh, we have looked at uh, 7 plus 5. So for the 12 apps uh, that have been rolled out, uh, they have been able to take care of uh, many disadvantaged groups, uh, those with uh, hearing impairment, visual impairment, and the elderly, and so on. So if we were to organize another round, we will see whether there are any new suggestions, and then we'll see what can be done. What about um, voluntary agencies? They should uh, come up with suggestions. Yes, uh, we also rely on them right now for suggestions, and these apps have been quite successful. You are Secondly, as for the effective uh, publicity effort to boost download rate, we thank you for your comment, and we'll try to enhance publicity so as to cover more uh, um, underprivileged groups on um, accessible websites set up by pri uh, private companies. In fact, in the recognition scheme or the presentation ceremony that we that was held this morning, we are comparing this year with the last year, 50% more private companies um, have uh, participated in the recognition scheme. I believe with more publicity and with more support from more enterprises, this figure will continue to go up. Well, it's uh, a minute or so beyond your speaking time limit, Mr. Charles Smock. Well, just now, Mr. Raymond Wong said that uh, as far as the uh, Internet Learning Support Program is concerned, um, in your review, you focus on uh, bad debts and doubtful debts. 
And in fact, uh, two years ago, when you reported to the panel, we raised other concerns. For example, improper tendering and the liability incurred and performance issues, etc. All these issues are not yet resolved. But I don't think we should spend time discussing these issues here because you are not going to come up with any answers anyway. So taking a broader perspective, we should discuss how we could improve the situation to um, improve digital inclusion. You see um, there have been a number of uh, improvements in different areas with uh, greater hit rates uh, and high utilization rate. And it's more user friendly as well. And you have um, learned from your experience from supporting hidden uh, elderly to um, poor students, needy students, etc. Well, your paper talks about a lot of initiatives that are ongoing or will, that will be implemented. But as far as a policy is concerned, will there be an in depth review? Because I have heard some comments. Usually, the government implement, implements measures like recognition schemes. Um, for example, I help you purchase computer and develop apps. But do they really meet the actual needs? And also, sometimes the needs may not emerge themselves. And if you know that uh, um, an initiative may benefit the underprivileged, would you take the lead in developing the relevant area to help the underprivileged so that as a whole you can improve digital inclusion? P.S. Thank you, Chairman. Well, first of all, I need to explain once again clearly that uh, in relation to the Internet Learning Support Program, there have been criticisms and concerns. And last year, I recall at this panel, I explained that after conducting a review and implemented measures in terms of the accounts and the contractual arrangements, we have resolved all problems with no loss incurred on the part of the government. So the issues have clearly been resolved. Well, Chairman, allow me to interject. I'm not trying to dispute. No loss incurred doesn't mean there is no problem. As for the way forward for Internet Learning Support Program, strategically, our experience is that if we communicate um, with those in need, we will understand their needs better. So we'll follow this direction, and that is why we find it more feasible to collaborate with NGOs. With advancement in technology, and uh, we need to uh, catch up with the technological advancements, and uh, we will try our hands on mobile apps and new media. And this is the direction we'll follow. And of course, we'll continue to listen to the views of the needy groups. Yes, GCIO. Let me supplement, Chairman. In fact, in our Digital 21 Strategy Advisory Committee, there is also a subcommittee on digital inclusion, which discussed strategic matters and implementation matters. And in 2014, in February, we uh, held an activity um, concerning NGOs and the IT sector. That was a very good activity uh, for NGOs to be matched with the IT sector so as to um, better tailor, uh, cater for the needs. Mr. Yu Siwing, Chairman, about point six and seven or para six and seven concerning the funding scheme altogether, seven mobile apps was uh, subsidized and these apps were was commissioned in uh, were commissioned in 2013 and i believe upgrades would be necessary for these apps has the government demanded the relevant units to provide regular updates and um, the who would um, cover the cost for updating for the second round, 41 proposals were received, quite a lot of them, but only five were selected. Now, so what are the criteria in approving proposals? And what about um, the uh, arrangement concerning expenses? Yes, who would like to respond? Ms. Lam. Yes, in approving the uh, subsidy, we agree with the relevant organizations. And then 
when upgrades are necessary. And as far as regular maintenance is concerned, uh, the organization should be responsible for them. And if necessary, we will pro provide support. What about the second question? 41 proposals, yes. Our criteria are as follows. Three points. First, we assess whether the proposal can really help the needy groups. That means on the point of um, practicability. Second is feasibility. Sometimes the proposals might carry a very good idea, but technically it might not be feasible. And the proposed technology might not be the best technology to um, be adopted to achieve the objective. Thirdly, we consider whether um, there are already mobile apps in the market fulfilling this function and whether there are already some uh, similar apps overseas. We find out if there are duplicating efforts so as to ensure that the apps subsidized would not uh, be a duplication. So these are the major three criteria in selecting the five proposals. Some of the other proposals uh, could not meet the criteria, not a pro problem with resources. Another question on developing mobile apps. Who made the request, the user or the software developer? Did they give you uh, a suggestion for you to consider? The users, that mean, means the service organizations and groups make the suggestion because they had the experience. So they make the suggestion and sometimes they would also uh, have discussed with some de developer um, or app developers to find the best solution. And what we do is to facilitate the work of the the service organizations to help them think clearly what they want and what how they would like to do it. And like I said, there was an event called when the NGO meets the IT people. That is for them to have brief meeting sessions to see how improvements can be made, how they can make use of technology to help them. But the, the event uh, was not uh, for them to look for an IT service provider. It was for service organizations to make suggestions on their experience. Yes, please go on. So when looking for an, a developer, did the government take part in uh, looking for a uh, screening for the developer or did the users approach them? No, the government did not take part in the screening process. The service organizations based their selection on the government's requirements through open tendering for app developers. Next, Mr. Tam Yu Chong. Now, I have a question because the needy groups are, say, the elderly and the dis disadvantaged. So in promoting the use of um, these apps, uh, has the uh, have the NGOs encountered any difficulties? Well, for example, the elderly people may not be familiar with the use of computers and technology, and um, they might easily forget uh, the what they have been taught. So, um, do they have this experience? And when the government is encouraged the underprivileged to make use of technology. Has the government also taught them about the protection of personal data privacy and also uh, the respect for uh, intellectual property rights? Mr. Lam, thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Member, for the questions. When we promote digital inclusion for elderly people, the work is taken up by um, the uh, experienced organizations. Um, for example, Paul Uncook and Sing Kong Kui uh, Service Unit and also the Lutheran Church Service Unit. And they help elderly people living in institutions to 
use the internet and to communicate with their children and grandchildren overseas and to use tablets and to help them and have some brain exercise through computer games and uh, they have been able to help them in this in this regard on privacy protection and uh, cyber security yes we uh, worked on that as well when they were signing the apps we also have also reminded them on uh, cyber security matters and uh, privacy protection and in our training courses we also place emphasis on these areas for example when teaching elderly people and the disabled to use computers we also remind them to protect uh, their own privacy well i have this problem as well i help my mother uh, change her phone from a traditional mobile phone to a smartphone and I helped her and I also taught her uh, how to send text messages and in the end my mother uh, couldn't um, really use the phone and he had uh, and she had to switch back to a traditional mobile phone so that's why I asked whether you had any um, you had encountered any difficulties because in my case it was really hard um, through repeated uh, coaching, she still would forget. Yes, I see the institutions. Does that by encouraging elderly people to go back to their centers and uh, to use the uh, technology and to communicate with their peers so as to familiarize themselves with the technology? Yes, Ms. Lam, you'd like to respond? Thank you, Mr. Tam, for your concern for the elderly. And you're very correct. Elderly people tend to be quite forgetful. So the service organizations recruit many volunteers to help them uh, repeatedly on the use of mobile phones. And I'd be happy if you could invite your mother uh, to come to the center for these activities. Anyone else for the first round? If not, Mr. Yu Si Wing. Second round, three minutes. Still on the screening process and monitoring. Well, if the government is allocating funds, there should be some guidelines because uh, if um, not a large number of proposals are involved, you should take part in this election process. I, Of course, I can't tell whether there will be problems if you only let users choose. Still, because public money is involved, you should consider that. In para 24, it talks about Computer donation initiative to solicit 200 brand new computers for families in financial need. This helps um, boost the internet access rate, but 3.6% um, is still not using computers. I don't know whether 200 brand new computers can uh, really help um, those living or uh, low-income uh, households. Um, I wonder if you have tried to seek donation of second-hand computers. Ms. Lam, thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Yu. I thank you for your concern in this regard. When we allocate uh, subsidies, we uh, issue guidelines telling them what procedure to follow in choosing developers. And one must not think that after subsidies are granted, the uh, organizations will be left on their own without any help. In fact, every month our colleagues would hold meetings with them to look at the progress of um, the, the software being developed. And we also see if additional functions can be provided. Thank you.
So the whole development process uh, involves um, all the parties concerned, the government, the uh, developer, and also the service agencies would be working closely um, with one another. And we also understand Mr. Yu's concerns. All right, so next time round, uh, we'll see what we can do to ensure that uh, in selecting the uh, developers, uh, the process uh, will be fair and um, uh, just. For the uh, 200 uh, uh, new computers uh, being donated, that is uh, far from being able to resolve the problems of uh, some children having no access to computers. That's why for the two service uh, organizations, we have told them that uh, where there is a uh, genuine need, they can always make use of recycled computers available in a community. In other words, uh, second-hand computers, they have been doing that too. And also for corporations uh, which are willing to donate uh, a whole batch of computers, then the two um, organizations would also help to uh, distribute those uh, computers to those uh, needy students. Thank you. I'd also like to know, well, in NXP, you have the digital inclusion mobile apps, uh, and here it sets out uh, the download situation. And it sets out that, um, well, between 2012 and 13, during the first round uh, of digital inclusion mobile apps uh, and how they are being used, uh, but then when compared to other uh, mobile apps, for those uh, groups that uh, in need of uh, these, uh, for example, for the, um, um, well, well, um, the e-elderly activity search, it helps um, the elderly to search activities in over 190 local elderly centers and um, the target groups uh, would be 1.5 million. But then uh, as of um, the 15th of March, uh, there was only um, 6,103 downloads. So how are you able to ensure that um, you will be able to uh, achieve the target? Well, in this case, um, uh, is the Hong Kong Society for the Age, which is advocating this, and supposedly all the uh, member associations will benefit from this. So will you ensure that uh, for these elderly centers, uh, they would all try to help encourage the elders to make use of this app so that uh, the user uh, group will increase in size, or else uh, despite the fact that you're targeting 1.5 million elders, still there are only just uh, 6,000 plus downloads and it's just uh, too low. So can you explain why that is the case and uh, do you have any ways to increase the downloads? Mr. Lam, thank you, um, Chairman, for your question and comment. In fact, we have been resorting to different means to publicize it, including approaching the uh, relevant organizations for cooperation and collaboration. And we have also organized uh, exhibitions to promote the use of this. But of course, when we try to uh, promote the use of the apps, uh, there are other ways that we will be prepared to consider. And as the chair just suggested, we can also work hand in hand with different organizations so that there can be more collaboration. And then they can also help to promote the use of such apps. Well, later on, when we try to promote um, such apps more extensively, we can consider that. I also believe that um, well, of course, for such apps, yes, um, as you can see, the uh, download rate is not very high. We just we are just talking about uh, several thousand or maybe up to ten thousand. But then, I believe that uh, for the groups that have benefited, just a day ago, when we went to the um, IT um, ceremony, well, many user groups told us that uh, these apps uh, have been very useful. So I believe that uh, with good uh, 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 complements, um, it can be extended to more user groups. Well, for example, for the e-elderly activity search, if you can put up posters in all um, elderly activity center, and if you can also provide uh, the, um, the uh, QR code, then uh, there are many elders who also have smartphones and they will be able to download the app and they can benefit. What I'm most concerned about is that uh, they will just uh, be working on their own without looking at uh, uh, the availability of such apps. Yes, uh, for the um, society here, well, um, it is working very hard, but then um, the um, groups that they can it can reach out might be limited. 
So if you can extend it to other organizations, then they'll be able to help to promote it. And yet, that cannot be done by the um, Hong Kong Society for the Age. I don't think it will be able to go to all the day, uh, all the elderly activity center to promote the use of the app. So in this regard, I think your department should play a role. If you can work with them, then that would also increase the use. Thank you for your comment. All right, Miss uh, Miss Lau. Thank you. Um, in fact, we share your view. That's why in developing such a mobile apps, the uh, developing organization would be required to promote it uh, to its own organization. It should, it should also extend it to other um, organizations. For example, for the e elderly activity search, the Hong Kong Society for the Age would be required to approach all elderly centers to see um, or to promote the use. But then uh, the chair's suggestion is a very good one, so we will take it up further. And for such apps, basically, on our web page, you can also um, uh, see them all. So we will make use of the network and avenues available to us uh, to promote them. All right, no other comments. Okay, so we'll wrap up our discussion on this item, summarizing what's been said just now. Uh, sorry, one more. So many members were concerned about uh, how they can be promoted because we all believe that uh, these apps are very good and uh, they can help uh, the needy groups. But then uh, in terms of the publicity and promotion, um, there is something to be desired. So I hope that the department needs to think hard as to how you can promote it instead of just uh, relying on the organizations to make use of their own network to promote the use of these, net these uh, apps. Okay, we have already got a few hands raised uh, for the next item. So let's invite the relevant officials to join us first. Okay, this is um, an item on the issues relating to the non renewal of domestic free television program service license of ATV. With us today, our Secretary for uh, Commerce and Economic Development, Mr. Greg So, Ms. Susie Ho, Permanent Secretary for the Bureau, Mr. Joe Wong, Deputy Secretary. And uh, Ms. Elizabeth Tai from the uh, Office of the Communications Authority, and Ms. Eliza Lee, uh, Director General of Communications, and Mr. Ambrose Ho, Chairman of the Communications Authority, and uh, Mr. Tony Lee, Assistant Director, and also Mr. Edward To, Principal Assistant Secretary for Commerce and Economic Development. Bureau Director, would you like to make? Uh, an opening statement. Yes, thank you. The C in Council on the 1st of April decided that uh, ATV's uh, existing local free terrestrial uh, TV license uh, will not be renewed. And in order to meet the requirement of the law with regard to the uh, notice period of 12 months, uh, ATV will continue to provide uh, the free TV service until the 1st of April next year. And during the, in the meantime, it will be required to comply fully with the relevant requirements of the uh, communications ordinance. During the past week or so, the administration has already explained uh, repeatedly on different occasions the decision by the C in the Council and the process of its, of its decision, and also the reasoning for not renewing the license and also the contingency measures that will be put in pla place, I'd like to take the opportunity to uh, respond to some comments made. First of all, um, the procedures adopted uh, by the C in Council in dealing with the matter, I noticed that uh, some comments 
said that uh, in dealing with ATV's uh, application for renew, there was uh, a delay. Well, these people were of the view that, uh, well, as a result uh, of the recommendation made by the Communications Authority in early November last year not to renew ATV's license, therefore the Chief Executive and Council should have uh, taken a decision within the same month last year, that is within November, that a, a decision not to renew the license uh, should be taken, so that um, by 30th of November this year, there would be this 12-month uh, period uh, for the ATV to know that uh, its license would not be renewed. I think the relevant parties might not have understood the relevant uh, legal requirements uh, concerning application for renew. According to the rules, uh, the uh, C in Council will have to consider the recommendations by the CA and would and uh, as soon as practicable as soon as practicable a decision will have to be taken but then what's meant by practic as soon as practicable well before a decision is taken by the C in council in accordance with the legal requirements it will have to complete all the procedures and i'm sure you would agree that uh, a decision not to renew the license uh, would have a serious impact on the existing uh, licensee and therefore the C in council will have to make sure that all the procedures would be in line with uh, the um, requirement of the common law for procedural justice and therefore we do not uh, think it, that uh, is a deliberate uh, intention to delay by adopting the uh, by by allowing uh, procedural justice to be served. With regard to the shareholding change, and the court also decided in December last year that uh, two agents uh, or two managers will have to be appointed, and uh, one of the duties of the managers would be. Uh, involved uh, to the application for renewal by ATV, including approaching the relevant parties to uh, make submissions. And according to overseas legal advice, uh, the managers uh, of ATV in uh, on the 2nd of January already wrote to the government um, setting out the uh, reasons that should be taken into account uh, in considering the renewal of uh, license for ATV and that the advice was that a reasonable time should be given to the ATV so that the ATV would be able to come up with the reform proposal or the uh, re restructuring proposal and um, the uh, job to be done and the deadline should be the 31st of March. But then as of uh, the 31st of June, 31st of March, we have not received the relevant details. That's why on the very next day of the uh, expiry of the deadline, that is in accordance with the information available, a decision was taken. From this, we can see that uh, the CN Council has already met all the legal requirements and as soon as practicable, it has already tried to take a decision on the renewal application by the ATV. And for the two analog channels, uh, that will be uh, passed on to the RTHK. We understand that the decision not to renew the license would give rise to a transitional period during which the choices by the viewing public might be restricted. And about 480,000 uh, viewers who have not yet switched to digital TV might be affected. For a period of time, they might only be able to watch uh, um, one um, analog channel. And therefore, we are now talking to RTHK so that upon the suspension of the service by the ATV, two analog channels would be provided so that the existing digital channels of the RTH, of RTHK can be um, shown on the two analog channels. The administration also agrees that RTHK as a public broadcaster will not be able to fully replace ATV's uh, commercial free uh, TV service. So this is just an interim measure upon the suspension of analog service by the ATV. So it's um, an expediency measure so that uh, for the 480,000 viewers who have yet to switch to digital TV will have more choices during the transitional period. For this short-term arrangement, as far as RTHK is concerned, is indeed a challenge. RTHK will have to deal with uh, the manpower and facilities arrangements and it will also have to deal with the uh, financial uh, implications. So the uh, Bureau will be liaising closely with the senior management of RTHK and we will provide, assist we will provide appropriate support. And I believe that the, com the Communications Authority, as the authority responsible for the distribution of spectrum, We'll be looking at uh, the six uh, digital channels being run by ATV right now. So it will look at the distribution of such channels, and before a decision is taken, it will also consider public interest. The administration also expects that uh, for the um, Hong uh, for the Hong Kong uh, TV Entertainment Company Limited, it can roll out its services as soon as possible, so that uh, for viewers uh, they can have more free choices. 
the HKTV Entertainment promised that within 12 months of the license being issued and within 24 months, one um, integrated uh, Cantonese and also uh, English channel will be provided. The administration will be monitoring that closely as to how the uh, uh, the uh, enter uh, HKTVE will be rolling out its services. Welcome. I want to emphasize that the government has not underestimated the impact on adverse impact on free to air TV audiences uh, by this non renewal decision and will try to minimize the adverse impact as much as we can. And the, ta and the interdepartmental inter task force will implement responsive measures and do the proper pre preparation work. So I speak, it's not using the microphone. Um, would the secretary please uh, make photocopies of the speaking notes to us as well? Yes, please give copies of your speaking notes to our secretary. All right, questions from members. I have 11 members indicating they wish to ask questions. Stephen Ho, Claudia Mo, An Chang, Charles Mark, Sin Chong Kai, Ray Chen, Lan Kwok Hong, Ma Fung Kwok, Sit Ho, Li Chuck Yan, and Chen Yun Han. Right, just now saw Dr. Kwok Ka Ki raising his hand. So altogether 12. And I just received a motion. Uh, proposed by uh, Ms. Claudia Mo, and we need to uh, give some time for that. Uh, you have a question for the uh, chairman, Mr. Ambrose Ho. You have opening statement as well. On the 1st of April, the um, government announced the Seen Council announces the adoption of the recommendations of the Communications Authority not to renew the license of ATV and the in the paper submitted to LegCo by the government on the 1st of April. It sets out the justifications for the non-renewal decision uh, for ATV and that's why I won't repeat the points. After making this announcement, by the government, we note that on the handling of spectrum uh, and distribution, there have been some discussions. I want to point out that the ATV at present has a fixed carrier license, and the spectrum distributed would uh, expire only in November 2018. And with this exco decision on the 1st of April 2015, we've immediately informed ATV that we would consider exercising our power under the broadcasting ordinance on the 1st of April 2016. We are going to take back all the spectrum distributed to ATV. And once released, we need to redistribute the spectrum and we'll act in accordance with the um, broadcasting ordinance and also uh, the relevant guidelines. In dealing with the spectrum, we have some principles to follow. For example, we need to see how many TV stations there will be because, as you may know, the license renew application for TVB is now being processed by Exco, and once the government has a decision, of course, we will consider that. On the 1st of April, the Hong Kong TVE was just granted a license, and uh, it will do so by way of a fixed network. And if it intends to change its transmission mode, it must first apply with the Communications Authority. And by then, we will give due consideration. And in October 2013, in principle approval was also given to another um, uh, uh, applicant, the Fantasy TV, and this is again now being processed by the uh, by Sea in Council, and for the spectrum to be released by ATV, we will g give a holistic consideration by then, and 
One consideration is that under the broadcasting ordinance, it is the communications authorities function to ensure um, effective and proper use of spectrum. That is to say, we need to consider one major factor. Now, if the spectrum is needed by another um, applicant, uh, whether the spectrum could be distributed to the applicant in a short period of time. And before the 1st of April 2016, as far as ATV is concerned, we will, as soon as possible, make a decision on the distribution of spectrum and explain to the public. From now to the 1st of April next year, the ATV is required to follow the relevant requirements and codes of practice uh, and the BO in providing service. And meanwhile, we'll continue to monitor and see if there are any contraventions. And of course, should there be contraventions, we have an effective mechanism in uh, handling that. All right, so much from the government. We have uh, Mr. Yu Si Wing on the list as well, and Mr. Raymond Wong. Altogether, 14. F four minutes each, that would take at least an hour. If uh, only one round is allowed, then each can have four minutes because we still need time to uh, handle the motion. Mr. Stephen Ho. Thank you, Chairman. Spe uh, spectrum is uh, public resources, and um, since the ATV's license will not be renewed, uh, on what basis would the government transfer the spectrum to RTHK such that uh, because other um, contenders in the market would not be interested in the analog uh, mode, w uh, which would only last for four more years anyway? And I'd like to ask this question. You're using public resources to... Um, allow uh, uh, transmission in analog format for four more years. And um, just now, as Secretary put it, only f there are only 480,000 uh, people, not our audience, uh, not having the uh, digital TV box. So as far as costs are concerned, we're talking about $250 million for the 480,000 audience. Comparing to five hundred million dollars, would you would the government spend five hundred million dollars to install TV top boxes first, so that um, everyone in Hong Kong would be able to view the digital channels of RTHK? And thirdly, can the government address allegations in the community? and the conflict between government and private operators. Uh, I'll stop you at four minutes, questions and answers included. Who will take the question? As for allowing RTHK to air uh, in analog format, our objective is to terminate the analog format in 2020. If the ATV's license expires next April, we're talking about some three years left. We need to consider the time needed for a commercial organization to make an application, to prepare the spectrum, to build the studio, all the preparation work, how long that would take. That means we have limited time to ensure a stable and uh, steady provision of services uh, and programs. We believe that RTHK is the best option. Imagine if we waited for more uh, for uh, a period of time to see if there would be any interested uh, commercial operator in applying for a license, and um, that may not be feasible. And for your other question, correct, we need to consider cost effectiveness. We're talking about 480,000 households not um, 
accessing t digital TV at the moment, and uh, if they're installed with TV boxes, and indeed they can then receive digital signal. So the RTHK's consideration uh, in transmission in analog format is to play uh, playback uh, digital content uh, in analog format on these channels. So we need to consider cost effectiveness. And it should be proportionate to um, the situation comparing to installing TV top boxes for these uh, households. And to address your third question, in order to ensure speedy um, delivery of programs to the uh, public in the analog format, we believe that RTHK is the appropriate uh, option. So that means TV top boxes is uh, would cost less than uh, turning RTHK into an analog channel. Ms. Claudia Mo. Well, it's a free market. It's for um, commercial operators to decide. You can't. You you don't have to decide for them uh, whether it's good investment, whether they need to build a studio, so on and so forth. Well, 2016 may be your target, but what if things drag on for 2025 or 2030? Uh, what if um, the mainland side says that it's not ready? Well, coming back to my top point, I want to talk about RTHK. RTHK is a government department. At the same time, it's a public broadcaster. Public broadcasters should not be subject to any commercial pressure. It should not carry any political agenda. Its objective is to serve the public with public money. Now it's more like uh, it's neither here nor there. Uh, you have the uh, head uh, or the chief. Um, that's it. And a uh, that's from the government, and you're now asking RTHK to take over the two analog channels from ATV. In fact, you are turning RTHK into the CCTV for Hong Kong. And as you mentioned, as far as uh, legal matters and financial matters are concerned, and and also, as far as the civil service is concerned, we should consider it more carefully. You can't just casually ask RTHK to take up the channels. It's totally unacceptable. Second question. There is an allegation that you are trying to delay the license renewal for TVB and, and uh, also uh, strangely, there is in principle approval for fantasy TV, but a formal license has not been approved. Can't you speed things up? You are playing the delaying tactics so that there are a lot of uncertainties. Mr. Ricky Wong is applying for a free to air TV license, and then you keep saying that there are a lot of uncertainties, a lot of factors, and keep on dr uh, dragging your feet. That means you only give. Um, you know, um, uh, that means that you're concerned uh, about those um, uh, obedient businessmen in Hong Kong. Well, I want to explain that um, our target is 2020, but in 2017, 2018, we will review on uh, review the progress of terminating broadcasting in the analog format. We are liaising with um, the relevant organizations and with a good, digi uh, good progress in digitalization. We could speed things up. Our target at the moment is 2020. Now, there are 480,000 households at present. Well, my question is on uh, uh, making RTHK um, a state uh, enterprise. Or state-owned uh, um, organization. Well, RTHK is a public broadcaster. I don't think we should um, consider Ms. Claudia Mo's comment that it is a state-owned organization. Well, Chairman, I don't think he understands what is meant by public broadcasting. But please allow Secretary time to answer your question about TVB and Fantasy TVs. Um, license applications and also the renewal application for TVB. We are acting in accordance with the procedures. So we have to ensure.
procedural justice, and on that basis, we are processing the application for renewal as quickly as possible. Thank you. Ms. Anqiang. Thank you, Chairman. We all know that uh, well, the administration has said, uh, well, shortly before the, announce the announcement made by the administration on the non-renew of uh, ATV's license, ATV announced that uh, there was uh, a white knight who would be injecting funds into uh, the broadcaster, but then uh, you said that uh, because of the pressure of time, that would not be accepted. Apparently, today um, I read the newspaper, and still there are parties uh, who are willing to inject funds into ATV so that it can continue to operate. So, would, given that situation, would the administration still give the license to RTHK rather than any uh, white knight or any new investor? Bureau Director, as I explained uh, in my opening statement about the legal procedures. So the legal procedures require us uh, to give them um, until the 31st of uh, March as the deadline for any such restructuring proposal. So they were supposed uh, to come up with the uh, specific details of the restructuring plan. But then by the 31st uh, of March, we did not manage to get the details. So on that basis, we have already followed the procedures. So on the 1st of April, DC in council decided not to renew the license. So it's not about uh, passing ATV's license to RTHK. No, we have not done that at all. So for the spectrum, well, right now, ATV has two types of spectrum. One would be digital spectrums. One would be um, analog spectrums. Well, for the digital uh, spectrums, the CA will deal with it um, effectively as to how those uh, spectrums will be distributed. But then for the analog spectrums, because of the uh, time pressure and also because of the actual commercial operations, they might not, uh, any newcomer might not be able to provide the service very expeditiously. That's why we believe that uh, passing them on to the to RTHK to continue to provide the service in analog forms so that uh, for its existing programs, they can be um, uh, made or turned into analog programs and that would better serve the community. Ms. Tiang, I, I think the Secretary has not answered my question. All right, I was, I was saying that, uh, all right, if there are white knights out there thinking that uh, there are hundreds of staff working for ATV, and ATV has got a brand for several decades, and also uh, during, uh, during the Rediffusion times, uh, there were also many famous uh, um, stars. So if they are willing to invest uh, so that ATV can continue with its operation, then by the by April the 1st uh, next year, are you still insisting that uh, it would not be given a license? And why are you still insisting giving the license to RTHK? So um, is there a way that ATV can survive? With regard to the decision not to renew, it has been taken by the CE in council already, and there is no appeal mechanism available. And let me explain one more thing. Well, in applying for a license, it's not just about uh, uh, whether or not you have sufficient funds. You also have to look at the programming and also the operational details. These are very important factors, and I'm sure the CA will be able to explain the justifications for recommending a non-renewal. That's why on the 31st of March or up to the 1st of April, we haven't got any additional information to suggest that ATV can operate uh, smoothly. So when we asked them um, to give us uh, the details, the request uh, was very clear. And the public also would not want to wait any further before DC and Council will make an appropriate decision. Next, uh, Pete, uh, Charles Peter Mock. Chairman, what I'd like to know is why is it that um, in September, the CA already made a recommendation to the CE in Council and still no preparation was made or that uh, you did not have any contingency plan in place? Is it that uh, on the part of the uh, CE in Council, uh, they have given you a very difficult task, and therefore the analog channels will have to uh, be given to RTHK. That's why you were not able to uh, deal with the situation effectively. So between September last year and now, have you come up with any contingency plan at all? And according to the Bureau Director, the Communications Ordinance 
does not uh, bind the administration as to how the uh, channels would be used by the administration, you can always make a decision. So you are above and over the communications ordinance, and therefore for the analog channels, you are actually nationalizing them. So I'd like to know on what legal basis have you taken that decision, because in doing so, as you have said, and you've also repeated that now, and you said that uh, would any commercial institution be interested in providing analog service? That's a big question mark. But then, have you confirmed that? As I've told you, well, according to those that, that I've come into contact, there are three organizations which have indicated that they would be interested uh, in providing analog service. So the question is, you have not done any public consultation at all. So can you tell us what are the justifications for you to decide that you can at over and above the communications ordinance, and also the RTHK also said that uh, by six months uh, they will have to come up with a plan. And yesterday they also said that uh, they would consider providing new uh, service. But then earlier on you also said that RTHK would not be providing new services at all. So, Bureau Director, would you be against RTHK running a news channel? First of all, let me clarify. That, um, well, Mr. Mo, you said that uh, in September, the CA already made a recommendation. In fact, it was made in November. And also, you asked about the contingency plan. What was it all about? So between November and now, in fact, um, you were fully aware of the fact that if CN Council had followed the recommendation, then uh, ATV's li license would not be renewed. So you should have um, got a plan in mind as to how you're going to deal with the situation. You, you're putting this uh, to the CA. Who is to answer? Mr. Ho? After we have submitted the recommendation, of course, in the end, uh, the decision would be taken by the CN Council as to whether the license would be renewed and which broadcaster would get its license renewed. And as you know, on the first of this, uh, on the first of April, um, CN Council decided that uh, ATV's license would not be renewed. In fact, uh, for the other broadcasters in October last year, um, there was uh, in October uh, the previous year, and in principle uh, approval was given uh, to grant a license. So that was done in 2013. So we also had to bear in mind as to how many licenses should be issued. And of course, we had to wait until after the CE in Council has taken a decision. But then, as I said, as the two broadcasters were already given the in principle approval for a license, and uh, they would be broadcasting their services uh, uh, via a fixed network. Sorry, can I supplement? Well, on ATV's uh, spectrums, on the allocation, in fact, uh, that would be up to the, uh, the end of November 2018. So the uh, fixed carrier license would, um, uh, would last until 2018. What about the third question? So on what legal basis have you taken the decision? Would you against uh, RTHK running a news channel? Well, on the second question, on the three uh, institutions, it's not just uh, anybody can take over it. So it has to be processed uh, by the CA, and then the CA will have to, in turn, make a recommendation to the CA in council before a decision will be taken. Well, next one should be Sin Chong Kai, but then as you, um, as Raymond Wong, would be the 14th uh, to ask questions, but then uh, as he has to. Uh, uh, take a guided tour of students around this council building, so he will have to leave by four o'clock. So, would you uh, uh, would you uh, agree that uh, Raymond Wong will be given the ch chance to ask first? Uh, sorry, I have to leave by four because I have to um, show students around uh, the building. All right, um, many members are interested um, in the allocation of the two um, analog channels. In fact, uh, for fixed um, network TV. Well, for the free TV channels, uh, so according to the reports, you'll be granting the license, all right, uh, HKTVE will be uh, running the service, all right, uh, that will be uh, transmitted uh, via the fixed network. Now we're trying to switch over from um, analog to digital uh, TV, and still there are some 480,000 households uh, that have yet to switch over. So what is going to happen? So RTHK would just uh, be switching its uh, digital programs into analog programs, and Mr. Charles Mock was asking if uh, RTHK would be allowed to run new service. In fact, uh, for pu public broadcasting, is still under your rim. All right, uh, that's one 
point that you will have to um, respond to. And you also said that, uh, all right, uh, in a few years' time, uh, there will be no uh, analog service and everything will be uh, turned digital. All right, that's uh, 2020. Okay, by the end of 2020, you're going to um, close down all analog services. So it said that uh, the services will be given to LTHK instead of saying that, uh, well, by 2018, ATV's license will be expired. Uh, in fact, uh, the service will run till 2020, is that right? So for analog service, it will last until 2020. So are you giving the service uh, to LTHK? So it's not going to replace ATV, is that right? You will have to make it clear. Because uh, in your speaking note, uh, para 7, you said that the government also agrees that uh, LTHK as a public broadcaster, it will not be able to fully replace uh, uh, ATV's uh, free TV service. So this is just uh, a ex an expediency measure before the um, termination of uh, analog service. So uh, none of us uh, is, an, in an, is an expert other than uh, Charles Peter Mock. So, um, uh, they've been asking very messy questions, and you've been giving very lousy answers. Of course, uh, it is your responsibility. Well, given the circumstances, you need to. Uh, there is um, all the more need for you to come clean on this, because I've been chairman of the ITBP for years, uh, and therefore I know that many members are not very clear about the situation. All right, in a few years' time, there is a very high chance uh, that we are going to have um, uh, just one broadcaster, because ATV can uh, fold up uh, any time now. And now THK does not have a license. All right, the HKTVE also has a license, but it has yet had to start its service. So um, in, the sh in the near term, there is a very high chance that we only have TVB as a broadcaster. So this is the duty of the administration. You will have to explain to the public how you're going to resolve the problem. All right, um, there are people who are not clear about what is happening. All right, ATV's license is not renewed, and HKTVE has been granted a license, and they think that HKTVE is a replacement, but that's not true because uh, it is providing the service uh, via fixed network. So one of the ATV, uh, well, ATV is using the free sp spectrum. It is terrestrial TV. Why is it that when you made the announcement, you are giving the license uh, to HKTVE, and you are, you did not announce at the same time that you are renewing the license for eight, for TVB. Well, we will have to act uh, in accordance with procedural justice in processing all the applications. So, can you tell us uh, in a foreseeable future, if there is only one broadcaster, do you have the responsibility to make sure that uh, this is this will not be the case? You are trying to open up the spectrum. You are trying to give more licenses, and how come there is only one? Well, for HKTVE, it will have to roll out its service within 12 months. So the first uh, Cantonese channel will have to be provided in 12 months. What if ATV uh, closes down? Next, uh, Sin Chong Kai. Chairman, I'd, also, I'd like to put this to the CA. All right. You have not rejected uh, to renew the license for TVB, but then uh, the seat in council has yet to announce that. So the question is the conditions to be attached to the license. And now you're also uh, granting a license to HKTVE. And if new, li new license is to be issued, uh, and if uh, the spectrums released by ATV would not be enough to distribute to all the newcomers, then what is going to happen? Mr. Ambrose Ho. Thank you, Mr. Sin, for your question. First of all, for TVB's uh, application for renewal, all right, this is being processed by the CN Council, and by the time when the CN Council um, makes a decision, I'm sure they will announce it. And also, for Fantasy TV, we have also made a recommendation, and it's now being processed by CN Council. So by the time when these two uh, who have been granted in principle approval, all right, uh, um, HKTVE will be given a license for sure. When they put in their application, they suggested that they would be transmitting the service uh, via fixed network, and therefore, if they want to change the mode of uh, transmission, first of all, they will have to make an application to the CA, and of course, we will have to consider their justifications for doing that, and then we will process it accordingly. And now, even if the two newcomers would like to switch their mode of transmission using the uh, free terrestrial spectrum. Or, uh, one now, what we are considering is this. For the spectrum released by ATV, 
it would allow roughly 1.5 channels and for the AT, uh, uh, HKTVE and Fantasy TV applications uh, they would each provide a Cantonese channel and an English channel respectively and they would take up less than one channel spectrum so we still have half a channel spectrum available for other purposes so of course we have to consider that once the spectrum is released one principle we need to consider is that the communications authority is tasked to facilitate uh, the utilization of spectrum so by then we need to consider whether once granting the license the operator may take up the spectrum uh, within a short period of time otherwise without even a license it would be useless to distribute the spectrum so this is one major principle to consider so let me follow up on this so my understanding is that uh, there won't be uh, um, too many uh, contestants with a limited uh, spectrum. This is uh, the situation that we see to the, the today, uh, as I said. But of course, if there are new applicants, we also need to consider them. Well, it seems that uh, the Hong Kong TV's application is still on the table. It hasn't been submitted to uh, uh, seeing council yet. I don't know if it will be approved, but, but if once approved, uh, will there be too many applicants? We will try our best to process Hong Kong TV's application as soon as possible. But this is an interactive process. In the course, we may demand more information from then, and when the time is right, we will submit the application to seeing council. Mr. Ray Chan. I'd like to thank Mr. Ambrose uh, Ho first because this time the CA make a recommendation not to renew ATV's license and the CE and Council accepted your recommendation. Last time the recommendation was to um, give uh, Hong Kong TV this license and uh, your recommendation was turned down and I said if that happened again you should step down and fortunately that this um, this didn't happen this time, and for the ATV scandal, uh, this is not the first time. Last time I asked uh, about this, ATV would just switch off um, any time, and I asked whether you have any responsive measures, and would uh, RTHK programs be used? And at that time, PS uh, never gave, gave uh, never gave this a, th a thought. She said whether uh, she didn't know whether this uh, would be feasible or not. So I think um, the government is really underestimating the opponent, namely um, ATV, because ATV would just switch off any time. And if it does so now, I don't know how you're going to tell the public whether RTHK could take up uh, immediately or take over immediately. Now handing over the uh, analog. Uh, channels to RTHK until the abolition of uh, transmission in analog format. My question is, uh, when have you come up with this idea? Now, just now, uh, Secretary said that the analog channels would be abolished in by 2020 or even earlier. And um, but you, we, you can't control the uncertainties, and RTHK would continue to run. And many ask why it would only run till 20. Uh, it will run till 2020, and uh, and why not uh, allowing why why not allow RTHK to run for some time until uh, and uh, any party from the uh, commercial market express interest. Well, now 480,000 households do not have digital TV, and. TVB is now dominating the market, whereas uh, TVB now can um, broadcast on the digital channel as well as analog channel. Uh, they can reap all the benefit from advertisements, and uh, the and uh, TVB is dominating the market with no competition at all. Have you thought about this? P.S. Ms. Ho, let me explain. In January, Mr. Ray Chan asked whether RTHK's programs could 
be uh, used uh, for the time being. And I remember at that time, my reply was that Mr. Ray Chan's suggestion is quite innovative. Well, it wasn't the case that I didn't, I never gave it a thought. But indeed, after that session, I talked to the RTHK colleagues to see whether it's technically feasible. And then, I subsequently realized that RTHK um, was in fact the most uh, probable option to convert the digital programs to analog format is uh, the best arrangement uh, during the transitional period. And I also mentioned that we're going to push back the original dates. Of course, we need to discuss with the uh, with uh, the mainland, and we also need to consider the fact that there are 480,000 households um, viewing the analog channel, and we want to minimize the disruption to them. And we also anticipate that uh, there will be more households switching to digital TV in the meantime, and we also understand that uh, that the there will be a, a, a the lifespan for analog channels would come to an end now but my suggestion at that time was that it should just uh, um be a mixed shift option as far as the outage case concerned mr lam kwa not in his seat next mr ma fong kwa well i have some questions some have been asked by colleagues and i have the these questions first I'd like to know more about the RTHK arrangement. Um, does it mean that a program would run on both channels at the same time? If so, additional resources for RTHK will be limited in order to meet the needs of the 400,000 households with limited choices. This is my first question. My second question is this. If RTHK takes over and if ATV refuses to um, allow this uh, transmission station to be used, then does it mean that the analog broadcasting uh, option would fail? And in that case, will there be any measures to ensure the implementation of your proposal? Third, on this occasion, um, an analog license would be abolished, a new license would be issued. As for the TVB's uh, renew application, a decision has yet to be reached. I'd like to know why. Will there be additional conditions for the renewal application, for example, to develop more, more local programs uh, or to adopt, uh, to buy programs from overseas, etc.? Yes. Mr. Ma's understanding is correct. Our proposal is to air the RTHK, the same RTHK program on both channels at the same time. This is the most um, feasible option. The RTHK's programs are produced. Uh, on the basis of digital broadcasting. So the programs will be produced accordingly. And as explained before, uh, this is what can be achieved uh, the most expeditiously with the existing resources of our THK. Now, uh, about the second question, if ATV review refuses our request about the transmission sta stations, uh, the they are situated on uh, short-term tenancies granted by the Lands Department, and such tenancies may be taken back by us with notice. Well, but if they don't give you the facilities, you can't um, implement it. Well, as for facilities, we need to work together because some facilities are in the hands of TVB. As for some other facilities, we have the statutory power to um, do something about it. As for the TVB license, well, let me say something about this. Now, taking ATV as an example, 
when the license application is still being processed, I'm not in position to comment on the procedure because due process is important, as I stressed a number of times. We need to follow the established procedures, and the scene council needs time to consider the application following the procedure. Uh, once a decision is reached, in, on an appropriate occasion, we will explain in greater detail. But please pardon me, I can't give you any details at this stage. What about the two channels of ATV? Would the government consider putting them up for open tendering or would applications be accepted? All right, your time's up, Mr. Lang Kuo Hong. Before I ask, um, Mr. Uh, Paul Chair indicated uh, uh, that he would like to ask questions as well. I need to draw a line here, Mr. Lang Kuo Hong. So this is the mystery that we should solve. The license application is rejected. So we don't know how long ATV will last. What if it, it uh, closes down tomorrow? Do you have a, a plan B uh, when RTHK could take over? I don't think legally it's feasible because the properties don't belong to RTHK. It hasn't a, um, a license, and the license covers the ownership of facilities. And what if three days later, ATV finds another buyer to run for another 11 months? So, in fact, when it comes to due process, there is nothing you can do. Before somebody dies, he has the right to live. You can't just unplug him. But to, so, Mr. So, Secretary, answer me. That means it doesn't work. So, Secretary, if ATV before the 1st of April next year prematurely ceases broadcasting, can RTHK take over in advance or must it wait until the 1st of April? First of all, the AT, uh, ATV must continue to provide its service in accordance with the licensing conditions. And the Communications Authority and myself would con closely monitor the service delivery. If, but please be quiet and listen to the Secretary. Well, if ATV stops delivering its service, the PS currently has an interdepartmental task force and will work with the RTHK colleagues to ensure the smooth handover as soon as possible. So as I said in my opening statement, this is a great challenge. And as mentioned by Mr. Raymond Wong, it is not as simple as converting from digital to analog format. We need uh, to resolve technical problems. We need uh, to implement uh, financial arrangements. Mr. Lang Hong. well, if it fails to Fulfill its licensing obligations. Penalize it. Penalize it till it clo till it closes down. Because now, what if ATV stops broadcasting tomorrow? And you may write and ask uh, for the program reruns. As a bureau director, you must have come up with uh, come across this idea. Can you penalize the uh, station so that it loses its license prematurely? Well, as said just now, uh, if the uh, operator breaches the licensing condition, I believe the communications authority will. Well, Mr. Lang Kuo Hong, please allow time the secretary to answer your question. Please listen to his answers. You can't listen to him uh, if you speak at the same time. Dying soon. So the question, let me paraphrase. If before the 1st of April, ATV stops its service, uh, will there be justifications for RTHK to start broadcasting sooner or must it wait till the 1st of April? It's not about technical feasibility. Uh, we're asking whether legally speaking it can or not. It, it cannot because the license still exists. I think this is Mr. Lang Kuo concern. Well, you're a lawyer. Just answer the legal point. You um, supervise, the, uh, you, you monitor the station. Don't talk about um, technical matters, Ms. Ho. 
Yes, the license still exists, but in the event of uh, severe breaches or uh, um, winding up um, process, then there are procedures to deal with the uh, uh, situation, such as to revoke the license. I don't all right. Uh, as far as uh, Hong Kong and also the ATP staff are concerned, the best uh, way to deal with it uh, is to allow it uh, to sell it off, and then the CA will look at uh, the new shareholders to see if they are fit and proper persons to run a TV broadcaster. That's the best way out. But then. Uh, for the purpose of uh, procedural justice, all right, uh, Deloitte has already said that uh, there is already a new buyer. But now you've ju you just uh, came out to announce that you are not going to renew the license, so there is no way for them to sort things out. Yes, just now, uh, Raymond Chen already made it uh, clear that is uh, it's not proper to give it uh, to RTHK because RTHK is to run um, a public broadcasting service. All right, uh, it should have run a news service, but now you do not allow them to do it. But now you are asking them to run um, 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 a, a comprehensive uh, show. So uh, what are they best uh, at running? So you're asking them to um, produce a drama. And uh, according to what you said, uh, they could also uh, occupy the spectrum until 2020. So, uh, well, that so TVB would be monopolizing the spectrum. So that has that is um, uh, the making of, that is your making. But in the end, uh, we are going to have a monopoly. So how can you call that justice? So please see it clearly in your opening statement. You have never mentioned TVB, but then the ultimate beneficiary will be TVB and RTHK, okay. If it's just uh, an expediency measure, that is uh, RTHK will be taking over the spectrums from ATV. But now, it's not just uh, for RTHK to come up with recommendation. I think it's about government's uh, uh, giving of resources to RTHK and manpower to RTHK. So would you allow RTHK to do it very flexibly so that it can outsource everything, including the production team from ATV, so that RTHK will be able to run on commercial principles and continue the operation. Or else, if you just ask RTHK to take over, so are you asking them to uh, show the um, entertainment program round the clock? So other than the 480,000 uh, households who do not have the set-top box, well, they will have uh, one more button to press on, but then all in all, Hong Kong's viewers will not be benefiting from that at all. So as the government, you should have come up with um, a better solution so that ATV, after a commercial way, will be able to sell its uh, shares off so that the entire stake will be given to um, a an enterprising uh, corporation so that uh, they will continue to run the uh, service. Uh, Bureau Director, well, I've heard that uh, people are saying that uh, the government has been uh, dragging its feet, but now uh, Ms. Ho is asking that uh, why have we not waited for a bit longer so that uh, for the, um, for the um, uh, new buyer, they can uh, come in and uh, run the service. Well, should we have acted in accordance with procedural uh, justice, according to legal advice, we will have to give them sufficient time, and the public have been asking why we have been uh, waiting for such a long time. So there was a controversy. That's why on this occasion we have given them enough time. And if you look at the information that they have furnished, uh, it's just uh, about the change in shareholders, and uh, such changes have not yet been uh, processed by the CA with regard to the proposed uh, change in shareholding. And there was also no programming arrangement and also its ability to run the service uh, has not been uh, confirmed. So why should we allow them to continue to run the uh, service then? Mr. Lee Chai-Yen, Chairman, just now the Secretary has been emphasizing the importance of uh, procedural justice. I think it's just uh, a messy uh, saga. All right, uh, you are not willing to grant free, uh, free TV license, and that's why HATV has been rejected or denied the license. And uh, we said that uh, you, would, you should uh, give one more license. You said that uh, you were concerned about competition and you were concerned about the survival of uh, these broadcasters. And now you say that for the purpose of competition, 
we cannot give them, uh, we cannot allow too many newcomers in. But now the messy saga has developed into such a state, and that is uh, really lovable. All right, uh, you should have uh, encouraged competition, and you're responsible for the competition. Uh, legislation, and now uh, you're going to the extreme. You are only going to have one broadcaster, and there is no competition at all. So I think the whole situation is really very lousy. So why have you allowed this to happen? This is really outrageous. And what is even more outrageous is that uh, this will continue uh, for another few years until 2020, and that might even continue uh, longer. So you are going to allow this monopoly to continue and broadcast and uh, advertisers uh, can only go to this one broadcaster and um, of course uh, the broadcaster will be able to increase prices. So what is going to happen? And then for the free TV uh, services, they are still not able to start the service and you talk about uh, cables, uh, fantasy TV, we don't know what is going to happen to it. And also for the HKTVE, we don't know when it can run the service and HKTV's uh, license application has not yet been processed. So this is the first problem. Second, what can RTHK do? So the best that, that it can do is to run a new service. So would you allow RTHK to run a new service? That is, would you allow it uh, to run a news channel? So would you allow it uh, to set up a trading fund? All right, for Hong Kong Post, it can compete with DHL. So would you allow RTHK to do the same so that it can uh, 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 buy in some drama series and also run a news channel service? So would you allow it to compete with TVB? So to what extent would you allow RTHK a free hand to run the service? From what I heard from Li Chat Yan, I'm supposed to protect ATV, is that right? You said that initially I was there to protect ATV and now you're asking me to give uh, ATV more time. No, please don't put words into my mouth. I was saying that uh, initially you, you tried to protect ATV and uh, you said that uh, that would not be good for competition. Please do not speak at the same time. So I never said that uh, you should uh, give more time to ATV. But for all these applications, we have to act in accordance with procedures. We have to act in accordance with the law in processing their applications. So we cannot say that uh, because uh, one um, broadcaster is uh, dominating the scene. That's why we are not going to do it uh, in accordance with procedural justice. We'll see in council, we have to follow the procedures in processing ATV's uh, application for renewal of license. That's why we have taken the decision uh, accordingly. And also you talk about the monopoly. In fact, um, C in council has also approved uh, the license uh, for HKTBE and you and uh, Mr. Lee was not sure when it would it would start to run the service. In fact, according to the licensing conditions, uh, in 12 months' time, they will have to provide a Cantonese uh, channel, and then in 24 months, they will have to provide an English channel. So there are already um, procedures, and uh, that's been spelled out very clearly in the licensing conditions. They'll be running the service. So there will, be, there will not be a situation whereby there is only one broadcaster uh, dominating the scene. We will continue to follow the procedures in processing such applications. But in reality, there is only one broadcaster remaining. So what about RTHK running new service? Would that be allowed? Chen Yun Han, Bureau Director, I understand that you have a hard time because if you look at the whole saga, you give people the impression that uh, you are at a loss as to what you should be doing. So it's not uh, uh, something new that uh, ATV has been experiencing difficulties while well, even the uh, major shareholders have been uh, uh, dancing still. The problem is there. So. Um, you should have uh, put in place a contingency plan to cater for the situation. The fact that uh, there are members criticizing you, in fact, uh, the situation has left a lot to be desired. That's why we uh, are having this uh, sorry situation. All right, uh, you talk about 40, 480,000 households which are still watching analog TV. So many of them are elderly households. So. Their only choice is to watch TVB. In fact, uh, some elders are not happy with the situation. Recently, I've also heard people say that, uh, all right, uh, Madam Chen, what is going to happen? There is no choice for me at all. In fact, many elders uh, like to watch ATV programs. So whatever you're going to do, well, from the HKTV saga, uh, well, the administration has not given me the impression that uh, you're able to look forward. All right, uh, if ATV... Uh, I think uh, you're at a loss as to what you should be doing. Many people 
also say that uh, there should be a seamless transition. I don't think it would be the case. All right, uh, you said that uh, HKTVB can only roll out the service in 12 months' time, and you're not sure if the spectrum should be given to RTHK. And RTHK, if it wants to run a new service, then it will have to be approved by you. So if that is the case, then uh, our ATV could have um, folded up. So you will have to really uh, start the whole thing afresh because from what you're doing, you have not been able to con to convince people that you're doing the right thing. And I'm also concerned about the workers' rights. In fact, the workers have been suggesting that our ATV situation should be dealt with, and yet the administration has not done anything about it. Matthew Chang is saying that, well, the Labor Department has done its job, and ATV has been fined more than a million dollars. In fact, according to the law, theoretically speaking, uh, for any uh, uh, wages in arrears, uh, the um, the employer should have been punished. And now, only Lao Lan Chang has come forward so you should have taken you should have taken action to prevent something like that happen again people like Wang Cheng should be punished so what is the government's view on this I think both things need to be dealt with well during the next uh, two or three years my impression is that uh, RTHK is ill prepared for that and also in terms of protection of uh, employees rights all right only Lao Lan Cheng has been held responsible what about Wang Cheng basically uh, he is trying to um, uh, play tricks on the administration. So under the existing um, employment legislation, you should you should punish the the right guy, and uh, should Lao Lan Chang be uh, made a, a scapegoat. So I don't think that's right. So for uh, employment uh, for employment situation, if you're not you don't know how to answer the question, is okay. For the allocation of our uh, spectrums, for digital uh, spectrums and also the analog spectrums, uh, they have been used up. That's why if any TV broadcaster is not able to run the service, well, you are not able to justify the whole thing because uh, these problems are not new. They have been there for a long time. So uh, are you asking him to answer the question on labor uh, issues? You will have to ask Matthew Chang to come then. Well, for analog and uh, digital uh, spectrums, they are being fully used now. That's why for any service provider, if it suspends the service or if its license is not renewed, then um, an inevitable situation is that uh, for the time being, the spectrums would not be fully utilized. Yes, we can understand that. But then the thing is, why have you not been able to do a better job, Bureau Director? Well, you have uh, you have said uh, along you have. Uh, uh, tried uh, very hard to answer the question still you should not have taken up all the responsibilities you should know that uh, um, uh, the guy who should be held responsible should be uh, punished KK Kwok KK Kwok is your turn now yes chairman if you look at ATV's uh, saga it's a farce Basically, about a year or so ago, when we could see that uh, its uh, um, program quality was dropping, we could expect that to happen one day. But now, uh, the, pro the problem is uh, what the administration has done is highly controversial. All right, uh, for a free TV ter terrestrial analog spectrum, uh, it has been replaced. We all know that RTHK is providing a service, but then. Even without the analog channels, uh, RTHK will still be able to run the service uh, through channel 31 and also its digital TV in providing the service. And then for the viewing public, what they need is a readily accessible way to watch TV programs. And even if you take into account HKTVE, it will only be able to broadcast the service through a uh, set-top box. So during the first year, only 60% of the households would be able to use the service. And then in six year time, uh, it will only reach 85%. So many households, including those are from the grassroots, they will have no way of uh, watching HKTVE's programs. So the, has the administration not considered that at all? Should you have uh, foreseen that, that is uh, one day, um, if the license is not renewed, then what is going to happen? And the way you have, go up, you have gone about it, so is that an expediency measure by giving the spectrums to RTHK? All right, if it's just uh, an expediency measure, that is acceptable. But then if it's a permanent measure, that is not acceptable because uh, the viewing public needs to have more choices. In the past, if you look at ATV services, well, in the past, uh, you're talking about uh, well, the last uh, few decades. There were some services which would be comparable to those are provided by TVB now. 
uh, like some sort of integrated uh, programs. And I think the the government should at this juncture consider putting up the free to air TV license for open tender so that um, interested operators can compete for its operation. As I explained, this is an, an expedient measure. Our target is to terminate the uh, analog format by 2020. Expedient measure, yes, Secretary, but how long will it last? Well, just now the Secretary already said that uh, the target is 2020, but in fact, next year, on the 1st of April 2016, When the ATV license expires, that would be about three years' time, and the application process for any interested uh, bidder would uh, take about uh, three years. And uh, we should consider allowing RTHK to take over in the um, in the period. Well, you're going to take back this license, and that's fact. Why can't you start tendering process now so that by 2016, interested parties could take over the running of the TV station so that, well, I think any interested party can put in their application now. Yes, apply now, and the license would be granted immediately. Uh, Impossible. However, we're talking about uh, 2016 as the deadline. Now, but I'm talking about a choice. From now to 2020, the public can still obtain uh, analog uh, free-to-air terrestrial TV broadcasting. Next, Mr. U.C. Wing, second round. To pick up on other members' questions. We understand the operational difficulties of um, ATV, and uh, at any moment it will fold up because it's facing huge pressure in terms of wage, wage defaults, etc. And uh, I wonder if there are any transitional arrangements. I don't know how long this uh, transitional period would take. Uh, I want to know if there is a clear explanation for that. And in a year's time, ATV would take over the analog channels. But in fact, if there's nothing new, then it's quite pointless. You just copy the digital programs to analog channels. But on the other hand, if there are new programs, you may need more resources, more manpower, and then um, and then by 2020, they may need to downsize the uh, station, etc. I wonder if the uh, government has considered this. The RTHK should, f for example, write up a proposal and uh, telling us the budget for running um, programs for the analog channel because we need this information in LegCo. And do tell us, say, uh, if there are newcomers, uh, how long would it take for the tendering to um, be processed? And you cannot just um, pass the buck to RTHK. If it falls through, then we'll be in big trouble. I don't know whether the government will take a two-track approach. To answer your first question, well, if ATV's broadcasting is suspended, how can we help um, its resumption? Well, this up this is up to the broadcaster to decide. And uh, if its broadcasting is suspended, then it is in breach of its licensing conditions, and I think the Communications Authority will act in accordance with the law and to kickstart a series of, of uh, procedures such as revocation of license and penalties imposed. As for the other part of your question, I'll invite PS to answer. Now, on provision of um, services by RTHK, as I mentioned just now, basically the RTHK programs are produced in the di in digital format, so the core will be the digital broadcasting. What we're suggesting is to copy digital programs onto analog uh, channels for broadcasting, 
And of course, in developing digital programs, the RTHK has its own plan. And last year, when we came to the panel to brief members on the new RTHK Broadcasting House, we um, mentioned some new ideas and uh, some f new facilities for future development. And we need to take things step by step. Now, the expedient measure is that we will convert digital programs of RTHK to be broadcast on uh, analog channels. Now, there are also um, programs purchased uh, overseas, and yet uh, RTHK remains a public broadcaster. And we want to allow the 480,000 households with analog TV access only to have not just TVB and Pearl Channel, but other channels. And in a year's time, the Hong Kong TVE will also roll out its own programs. So we don't think the uh, choices uh, will be reduced. Next, Mr. Paul Chair. Chairman. The spirit of the legislation is to allow 24 months, to allow li uh, license, ho license holders 24 months to give notice for the government or the C in council to process the application. But unexpectedly, after announcing the CA's recommendations in November, the government said that due process would have to be followed, and then it took almost a year or so many months before deciding finally that the license would not be renewed. I think the CA or at least uh, Secretary should give us a more detailed explanation instead of using the term due process as the shield. Last week, the Police Commissioner applied for the development of two new systems for hardware and software upgrading, and he's proposing this two years in advance. And uh, so far, I haven't heard any good explanation from you um, for uh, Rule 9, NX4. The, it says the government can give direction for the relevant government department to take over the uh, land leases, the facilities um, for broadcasting. And that could help end this mess as soon as possible. Now that you've decided to not to renew its license, will the government consider this? That is to exercise its power as soon as possible. That is to allow a third party to take over the land, the facilities, um, so on and so forth, instead of um, passing everything to RTHK. Now, first of all, uh, for the provisions in the broadcasting ordinance, indeed, we would like to allow ample time for processing up the applications because it's quite complex and there is a mechanism under the legislation to allow a 12 month notice period such that. If the process, if the application cannot be processed in time, a 12-month notice period would be allowed, and this is under the mechanism. Secondly, in the annex of the BO, that is, the financial secretary could give direction for a third party to take over the um, land and the facilities, as we explained. In our letter to ATV informing them the non renewal decision, we mentioned that we reserve the right. I'm not asking whether you have this right or not, or whether you're reserving this right. I'm asking whether you will exercise the right. Don't continue to drag on your feet. And there are suggestions saying that the six ATV digital channels and the analog channels should be taken up by a third party as the operator instead of the RTHK. Well, we mentioned that uh, we reserve such rights as we said in the letter, and we're now looking at the relevant facilities at the moment, and we also uh, note the point you raised. 
As for allowing RTHK to take over the analog channels, I believe you have heard uh, the justifications we put forward in our discussion just now. I won't repeat. All right. So much from members. And Ms. Claudia Mo has a motion. Please read out your motion. This panel urges the uh, government to properly handle the incident of ATV's non license non renewal, including uh, re redistribution of the telecommunication spectrum vacated as soon as possible for any interested applicants to run free to air TV license to introduce competition in the Hong uh, domestic. T free TV market. Um, I believe that this is related to the item discussed, so I will post handle this motion. We don't have much time left, so um, let's proceed to a vote. With those in favour, please raise your hands. Seven. Sorry, eight. Keep your hands steady, please. Read out the names, please. Poor Chair. Let me read them out again. Poor Chair, Ray Chan, Sid Ho, Sin Chong Kai, Charles Mark, Claudia Mo, Stephen Ho, Yuxi Wing, and Ma Fung Kwok. Those against, please raise your hands. Those abstaining, nobody opposed, nobody abstained. Now, those raising their hands, you're members of this panel, right, Mr. Mnang Singh? You abstain, right? Okay, one. One abstain. Eight four, one abstain, no objection. Motion carried. Nothing under AOB. So, meetings adjourned today. Laura, okay.